Good morning, welcome to church. As well as the teacher, one word is behold, and I want you to say it with me. Behold! It means, it's Greek, it's idu. It means, hey, look at that, check that out, would you? I want to say, behold the love of Jesus Christ this morning. Would you do that? Would you do that? Behold the love of the people in the house. Move around, greet as many people as you can, all around the house, moving around. Find somebody you haven't spoken for a while. Give the best greeting, say, behold. Quite weird in, in 
judge, what will be that stuff going on? Children, parents, parents, work with me here. Children are rewarded, yeah? Oh, okay. <laughs> I think you know what a reward is. And sometimes they'll be rewarded with a pat on the back or a little bit lower down to give them the point, right? <laughs> I think you know what a reward is. The Bible has much to say about people being rewarded. And, and I don't think it'll come as any surprise to you that God in his word talks about people being rewarded for doing the right thing. Uh, let's quote out the psalm. Someone ought to preach on that. It probably won't be me. By the end of this series, I'm going to have someone else preach. And I think they should preach on that. What, what do you think? It would be Pastor Lee, by the way. <laughs> I think he'll do the right thing and get rewarded for it. Yeah? I think he will. I have that, we're having that meeting now. I told him we could have a meeting. Tell him Friday night. It's, it's now. <laughs> Thank you for being privy to our meeting. You don't get in on many staff meetings, you people, but you yeah. have Secondly, God is clear about people being rewarded for doing good work. I'm going to preach on that one next Sunday. I can hardly wait to preach on that. For doing good work. God wants it anyway. That's next Sunday. Parents, one of the rewards you get, <laughs> because none of you want to reward your kids apparently, one of the rewards you get for parody is you get the kids that God gives you. That's your reward. The Bible tells us that. And, and that's a Mother's Day message right there. Uh, Mums, and if it doesn't go well on that day with that message, you go, well, to the dad, that's your reward right there. Yeah. <laughs> and in God's economy, there is a reward for trust, for trust. And in the eternal scheme of things, there are eternal rewards. And, and straight away, someone will be thinking, yeah, yeah, I knew that, and I've been good. I know I've been good. Uh, and so I just want to remind you, no matter how good you are, you're not getting to heaven on your goodness or on your good works at all. I want to remind you, you cannot earn your way or work your way to heaven. Entry into heaven is by God's grace received by faith. Yeah. Yeah, let me give you a verse to substantiate that. Here we go. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 8 to 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork. I just love that because the Greek word is poema from which we get the English word poem. And I, whenever I look at it, I read that, and I look at it, oh, there's a lot of little poems here sitting before me this morning. Oh, you little poems. We are God's poems. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do what? We created to do good works, but we don't earn our way to heaven by good works, which God prepared when in advance for us to do. So when we talk about God's rewards, this always is related to the fact that God has given grace and he's given us grace to enter into a right relationship with him because he has paid uh, the price to remove every last obstacle uh, to being in a right relationship with him uh, through Christ's sacrifice on the cross. God has graciously given us gifts and skills and abilities and opportunities uh, to us that we might rise to the potential for which he created us uh, and, and to do and to become all that he wanted us to do and to become. And God has given us ministry opportunities and work opportunities and the requisite shape to do well in those kind of things. And by shape, by the way, that's uh, S-H-A-P, acronym, spiritual gifts, heart, abilities, personality, and experience. He's shaped us and he said, now I want you to do something with that shape. And for those of us who are parents, our, our children are our reward. Uh, they're just a reward in being a parent. And if you don't think that's a reward, you, you, you need some counsel. Come and see me, and then I'm a GP. I'll send you off somewhere else where you get deeper counseling. All right? That'd be good. So I'm going to give you a number of verses about these God-given uh, rewards uh, before focusing today on e eternal rewards. Psalm 18, verse 20, 24 in the NLT. Uh, the Lord rewarded me for doing the right thing. He restored me because of my innocence. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not turn from my God to follow evil. I have followed all his regulations. I have never abandoned his decrees. I am blameless before God, and I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. You see my innocence. Well, uh, we do the right thing if you do, only by his grace. And he rewards us because we stay connected to what he goes to do by his grace. Secondly, we are rewarded for working diligently, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10 in the NIV. 
For even when we were with you, says the Apostle Paul to the church at Thessalonica, we gave you this command, one who is unwilling to work shall not I reckon if we took that seriously, a lot of people are going hungry. <laughs> anyway, it's next week's message. God wants us to work. We were created and designed to work. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 to 25 in your message uh, says, Servants, do what you're told by your earthly masters and don't just do the minimum that you will get you by. Do your best. Work from the heart for your real master for God, confident that you'll get paid in full, says the message, or NIV says, confident that he will reward you when you come into your inheritance. Keep in mind always that the ultimate master you're serving is Christ. So on your bad days, think about that at work. <coughs> Boss, what they know, no more than they do. It's bossing me around, but you're not working for them ultimately, you're working for God. The sullen servant who does shoddy work will be held responsible. Being a follower of Christ doesn't cover up bad work. And it just doesn't. That's all next week's message, I'll skip into it there. Proverbs 12, Proverbs 12, verse, it's Proverbs, Mandy. Proverbs 12, 14. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Mandy's doing this and she texts me on Friday and says, Psalm 12, 14 doesn't seem to line up with where you're going. That's what Proverbs 12, 14. Wise words bring many benefits, and hard work brings... <laughs> None can say from this to that, you need to come back to something more, more about that next. Thirdly, the rewards of parenting. Oh, this is, I love this. I love this. Uh, here we go. Uh, that, this, is, this is Psalm 127, verse 3 in your NLT. Children are a gift from the Lord. So when they irritate, you say, oh, you little gift from the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> He's rewarding me. <laughs> they are reward from him. That's a couple of weeks' time to look at that. Fourthly, Mother's Day, 14th of May, bring a mum. Bring a daughter. Bring a son. Bring a friend. Bring, did I say husband? Bring a husband. Bring someone. Bring a friend. Bring an enemy. Fourthly, the reward, reward of trust. 1 Peter 1 19 in NLT. The reward of trusting Him will be the salvation of your souls. Hebrews 11 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because everyone who comes to Him must believe He exists and that He what? Rewards those who earnestly seek Him. And, and then for the rest of this message today, that's going to be the outline of the series for the next month. I want to talk about eternal rewards. And the good news, people, God rewards, uh, God's rewards to you are both for this life and the life to come. Some of you go, I just said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep it cool until he takes me out and the Lord's coming back, the sound of the archangel, the sound of the trumpet, and I'm going up to the top of heaven. And meanwhile, I just do the little as I can. And no, 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 it's for now. And while in the scheme of eternity, uh, three score years and ten, that's 70 years, that's what you're allocated, getting more than that, that's a good deal apparently. And, and the, the, some of you are wondering now, aren't you waking it up? Uh, 70 odd years, 80 years, 90 years is still a mighty long time for you to just cool your heels. God's got something better for you. John chapter 10, verse 10, the second part of that verse. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have a to the full or more abundantly. So he wants to reward us right now with the abundant life, but today we're talking about eternal rewards. 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 6 to 10, therefore we're always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body. How many of you are home in the body this morning? That's all of you. You all put your hands up. You're all home in the body. You're not, I don't know where you went. <laughs> we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and we're prepared to prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. Yeah, some of you haven't figured that out yet, but that's the way it is. And so we make our goal to what? Please Him, whether we're at home in the body or away from the body. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that we may receive what is due us for the things we have done while in the body, whether good or bad. So, here it is. It's like the end of the competition. 
And the umpire, the judge of the competition, is sitting in the judge's seat, the umpire's seat, and he goes, now I wonder how they've done. Not I wonder whether they're going to go to heaven or not. This is the day, capital D, because you're already lined up to go in. This is about God's people. This is not about whether you're going to heaven or not. This is about what you have done in the body, good or bad. And there's going to be rewards. So Jesus Christ sits as the umpire, and, and, and what, what, his eyes are searching everywhere. And he's going to uncover some stuff. It was worthwhile that you did, and a whole lot of other stuff that wasn't worth a bumper. It was worth absolutely nothing. Let me give you some verses here. By the way, I just want to give you 1 Corinthians 3 9, which is not going to be on your screen. Uh, and we are fellow builders with God. Fellow builders with God. Think about that word, fellow builders with God. 1 Corinthians 3 11 to 15 in NIV. This, this, is how he's going to, this is how he's going to do is whether I'm going to reward you for what you've done, good or bad. Right? Believers. This is what he's going to do. 1 Corinthians 3, 11 to 15. For no one can lay any foundation other than that one already laid, which is Christ Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, that's what you need to be building with, or wood, hay, or straw, that's what you don't need to be building with, uh, their work will be shown of what it is because the day, capital D, will bring it to light. Right there, as his eyes search, he's sitting in the umpire's seat, going, I wonder what they've done, good or bad, I'm checking it out, I'm checking it out. Uh, the day will bring it to light, it will be revealed with what? Fire. And the fire will test the quality of each person's work. Well, you know that wood, hay, and straw will get burned. And if you've been building with wood, hay, and straw, it's gone, man, in puff smoke. But if you've been building with the precious uh, metals that he mentioned, you know, like gold and silver and, and uh, precious stuff, it, that will survive. If what has been built survives, the builder, we're fellow builders with God, if, if what you built here, believers, survives, the builder, that you, will receive a reward. If it's burned up, psst, wood, hay, and stubble, uh, the builder will suffer loss, uh, but yet will be saved in this though only as one escaping through the flames. And I kind of think about that because, ladies, you put on your best perfume this morning. Walk by, I think you've got a nice perfume. Guys, you put on your best aftershave and you put on your best underarm and you're smelling good. But if you escape as only through the flames, you smell like you've been out in the bushfire in heaven. Think about that. We are fellow builders with God. There's only one foundation on which we are to build, the foundation which is Jesus Christ and Him crucified, risen from the dead, ascended uh, to the right hand of the glory of the throne of God. And if you build on any other foundation, you will be disqualified. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about all the people that need to know Him. Whether it's the councillors that are arguing and the toss and put it out there whether we should be playing breaks or not, they still need him. And all the people they represent in our district, tens of thousands of still need him. So we are uh, to build on the foundation, setting people up for getting right with God, on the foundation of Jesus Christ, him crucified, him risen from the dead, and him ascended to high to be at the right hand of the throne. Of God. And we are to build on this foundation with living stones, all those living stones that are out there that aren't in here yet. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, as you come to him, uh, the living stone, Jesus Christ, uh, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing. On the one hand, we are fellow builders with God. And we are building with living stones. On the other hand, we are the living stones. So living stones, we get to be builders. We get to be both of those things. We are building with living stones. We are the living stones. And this is a fantastic thing. The way we work with the living stones, fellow believers, is it, it, like this. It, it's to, number one, lead people who don't yet know God to faith in Jesus Christ. That's the first thing we're to do. If you're going to build with the precious metal of gold and silver and precious metals, rather than wood, hay and stubble, you need to be leading people to Christ. Yeah. You go, I'm not so good at that. We team. You just bring them to me. You bring them this way, I'll help you. We'll all work together on this. Yeah, but if you're not doing anything like that, then it's wood, hay and stubble. Secondly, 
uh, to be part of the team that enables the people to be planted in a local church just like this one, and since you're in this one, that's the one you'd be going for, you'd be foolish to go anywhere else, uh, and helping them to become more and more like Jesus. Got that? It's just two things there. One, lead them to Jesus. Two, help them to become more like Jesus. And apparently, if it, all you're about is the mere social thing, that's wood, hay, and stubble. All burn. Gone. And you smell smoky. Yeah? You say, but I don't smoke. No, you've been working with wood, hay, and stubble. It's getting burned. Uh, the discipleship investing uh, of seeing people become more and more like Christ, that's got uh, gold and silver and precious stones. And for that investment and that workmanship, 1 Corinthians 3.15, it tells me the builder will receive what? Reward. We're talking about rewards, yeah? The eternal reward is contingent upon what we do now according to God's plan. And uh, so what the Apostle Paul does, uh, I really want you to get this, and I've been using building motifs up until now. Some of you just don't have that handy, so you're probably not going to get it. So I'm going to give you another motif. I'm going to give you the athletics one. Because you're such an athletics looking bunch, you also fit and lean with me. So I'm going to give you the athletics one, all right? Because you might have got the building one, but I hope you get this one because it's all going to talk about the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. In your NIV, let us run with perseverance the what? Grace mark out for us. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul talks about that race that has been marked out for us, and he gives us some clues about how to run that race so that we might actually gain the reward, the prize, the crown. You with me? Yep, yep. It's all about the same thing, but he's using this different motif. Verses 19 to 23 in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he outlines how he endeavors to be culturally relevant whether he's with Jews, he's going to be like them to get him across the line. If he's with Greeks, he's going to be like them. If he's with, with total unbelievers that never heard about God, he's going to be into their cultural skin to get them across the line to, 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 to relate to them so that they will get the Jesus message. Why is he going to do that? 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9 and verse 19 in your NIV, to win as many as possible. He's winning, that's, that's the building, that's the winning thing. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22, so that by all possible means, I might what? Save some. some. So not everyone in church life kind of gets this. I'm not going to talk about our church because you, you're a bit smarter than the average bear. You're another church approach. It's pretty really good. You kind of get this. But not everyone in church life gets In some church circles, there is a pressure from those who lead in church life to stay true to the established traditions, whether they're getting anybody saved or not. That guy used to come in and go, where's the stained glass window? <laughs> and someone threw a rock through it. I don't know what, not here. Matthew 15 verse 6 says this, Thus you nullify the word of God, what? How? For the sake of your tradition. So, so there is often a pressure on the leader, on the pastor, on the key people in the life of the church who has read the word of God that I'm outlining to you this morning, who understands what the, the, the apostle here is teaching, that he, wants, uh, that, that, that he wants us to get on and use a culturally relevant procedure in order to win the lost to Christ and see them become more and more like you. There, there is a pressure to conform to the established tradition and just go to the old routines week after week, just turn up, don't upset anyone, don't rock the boat, uh, just do it because we just want to come to church, have a coffee and go home again. Uh, we do want you to have a coffee. Because that way I chat to you while you're doing the coffee. You know? But I've taught you before, you know that the meal is always on about more than food and drink. It's about Jesus. So Paul reminds us that he disciplines himself to stay true uh, to this pattern of reaching out to the lost through being culturally relevant. And, and he says, in this regard, I run with purpose. 
I run the groups. I stay true to the gospel proclamation plan. I have taken aim and I discipline myself to stay the distance with this aim. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27 on your, on your screen. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. And looking back at the old type Olympic Games back in antiquity in Paul's day, well, the crown they got was kind of woven of, of plant life and put it all together and, and stuck on your head. Uh, at that point, last, it, it, it'll corrupt in no time flat. But we do it to get a crown that will what? Last forever. Uh, it, it, that crown's a reward. It's a reward. And therefore, he says, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I got aim and I got purpose. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. So after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. I won't be disqualified for the reward. And while this scripture, and you've heard, you've heard sermons preached on this, you, you really will. And it's okay. That's only part of the story. Uh, while this scripture is, is here to remind us and challenge us to be on our guard, not to violate moral and ethical values, that's not the main purpose of it. Be on your guard so that you don't violate God's moral and ethical values. Actually, the primary thing that we're challenged about here is to make sure that we are being relevant in our gospel proclamation. That's what he's saying. And, and, and not simply doing the religious exercise, uh, but calling people to faith in Christ and doing that in such a way they understand without putting traditions in the way that no one understands and get in the way of people accepting Christ or growing in here. The whole idea is to proclaim Christ in a way that you understand it and you say, man, not only do I need to surrender to him, but I need to become more and more like him and you. And all of us together help people do that. He says, I have that an aim and a purpose. And that's to see more and more people surrender their lives to Christ. The crown, the prize, the reward will be because, number one, you have shown someone how to get in right with God through faith in Christ. Number two, you'll help someone to grow in him and become more Christ-like. Anything else, wood, hay, and stubble. It doesn't matter how, 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 how relational you are and how, how social you are. It's just wood, hay, and stubble if there's no Jesus. Yeah. Leading people to Christ. Gold and silver and precious stones. Showing them how to become more Christ-like. Gold and silver and precious stones. I'm going to wrap this message up this morning with two scriptures that encourage us to persevere when the going gets tough. James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Some say, well, you, you don't have to be that serious about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's not every good time. Would hate to stop it. Having stood the test, that person will receive what? The crown of life, the reward that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Revelation 2.10. I think there's a song that we've got to sing. I think it's one of the Bethel stable ones, I think, or maybe it's maybe it's Darling Check. Revelation 2.10. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you what? A victory crown. It's a reward. God's reward is coming the way of those who persevere and continue to love him and stay faithful to him to the end, but also those who lead others to Christ and help them to grow in Christ likeness. This is how I see it, God. Good picture. This is how I see it at the end. I see all of you there. And the young guy's there. The young guy is Jesus. And I see, it's, 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 like a, it's like a university or a high school graduation. And we're all going to graduate. Yeah? And he calls us all forward. And he says, I've, I've got the reward for you. And he gives you the reward. And as he gives you the reward, he says this. Well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah? Father in heaven, that's what I see for everyone in this room when they get it right with you and your ways. I see the victor's crown. I see the reward handed out. I hear the master's voice. Well done, good and faithful servant. And Father, I pray that everyone in this room this morning their heart would be for that. Receive the reward and hear, hear your words, Lord Jesus Christ. Well done, good and faithful servant. And Father, as we 
think about that final day when we receive that reward and hear the words. Meanwhile, between now and then, such a large company of people that need to know you that don't. And your place to see it at such a time as this. <coughs> Be your weapon to run that race. To see people more and more people come to know you as God and Saviour. To see them become more and more like you, Lord Jesus Christ, in Christ's likeness. Take us and use us. Long to hear your words. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand, people. He's going to say thank you as a reward. How can we thank him? Let's sing it together. Church, I just want to give you the opportunity this morning, you know, God's been touching your heart this morning, and someone here you know you're not quite where you ought to be with regards to relationship with God, or if you're not quite where you ought to be with regard to working with gold and silver and precious stones rather than wood, hay and stubble, just in these moments as I pray, would you take the walk down the front here so I can pray specifically for you? Would you do that? All heads bowed, all eyes closed as we pray. Make the walk if that's you. Loving Lord and God. You don't have to come, but you always do. And your presence is in this room. Lift it up on the praises of your people. Oh, we love us so much and you want the best for us. And you coach us and remind us how we ought to live. And Father, I'm praying right now that on that day, each one here will hear the words as they receive the reward. Well done good and faithful servant. But God, I'm, I'm praying more than that. I'm praying that on a daily basis, as we work with gold and silver and precious jewels, on a daily basis, we'll hear those words from you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Your people, Father, that they would hear these words of encouragement from you. Help us to move toward you and become more and more like Jesus and win people for him. Thank you, Father God. For issues that anyone is wrestling with here, thank you that you walk right through the walls of our darkness. You dealt with our past. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you're causing us to move on, leave that far behind and run the race with aim and with purpose. I commend everyone here to you, Father, and to your grace, in your strong and powerful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. People, just before you move, our cafe's open. Those of you needing the workbook for Connect Group, the book book is, get that, but the workbook, that's a different one. That's the one you do need. And if you're not in the Connect Group, see them at Information Central. They will gladly Take your name and we'll get you in a group in a very short period of time, okay? Move your way into the, into the cafe too, get yourself some raisin toast, three stations out there for that. Uh, go and get yourself a coffee, uh, a sausage, hang about. Uh, we, we hate hate when you just go. I'm like, but they like us. Stay. I want to talk to you. All right. That's one of you guys with you. By the way, those who are in the Connect Group Leaders, you know you've got a seminar around about like 10, 40, 10, 45, right back in here. Be blessed, have a fantastic day, love to see you back tonight. Dick calls to deep, that's the subject tonight, and you need to know what you're singing. Come and find out tonight. <laughs>